What's power and privilege? You wanna go? You wanna go? Um, I feel like power and privilege is two things together, and they can be used two things. Um, I feel like they both can be used for personal advantage and uh, communal advantage too. So it really depends on who has it and who's using it. Um, I feel like privilege is something that somebody is born with and also power, but power can be used for a certain extent for the person and privilege, can, you know, could be just exceeded because whoever has that, you know, could manifest whatever they want, do what they want. So, yeah. Well, for me, I feel like with comes power comes privilege and with comes privilege comes power because the people that are born into privilege have the power to do mo many many other things that other people can't do. And people who are born into that situation with power, they take that privilege for people who actually were striving for the privilege that they need because they have the power to do so. So with that, I feel like power and privilege are both something that can be abused. And I feel like it's something in our society where a lot of people don't, most people don't know they have it, but they, and there's like there's people who don't know they have it, and there's people who are aware that they have it. And most people who are aware that they have it, there's people who use it for, like I said, power and gain. And then there's people who were just like, keep it on the side without actually acknowledging it, but they know they have it. It's kind of where I feel like power and privilege comes from, what, it, what it actually is made of. So would you say the people who have power and privilege have responsibility to share it with others? I feel like with that comes how you, the environment that they were raised in. So I feel like those who feel like their power and privilege is something that they can share, those people that do, that feel like it can be shared, are people who actually go out and make moves into actually doing something while using that power and privilege to make it make life better. And those who don't want to basically say like they want to keep it to themselves because they feel like if they give out too much power, too much privilege, that everything that they've so-called worked on, or they haven't really worked on anything since they've been born into it already, they feel like it's going to be taken away from them in a second. Do people who have power and privilege have the responsibility to share it with other people? Um, it, it's like Giselle said, like it, it's based on natural and environmental, like how they were brought up and um, how they were nurtured. I feel like people who have a good background, who were nurtured and had their feelings and their thoughts taken care of, they um, they would naturally have the um, mindset of sharing what they have and having the um, the ability, um, their privilege, their authority, their power to. Uh, express and help other people rather there are some people who have a conservatory background who like stuff traditional like monarchs that has like absolute power uh they feel the need that they should be the only in control without the input of the people so yeah <laughs> what are some issues related to race in this community well related to race in this community is as buffalo as a whole is obviously the main point and factor that a lot of people do recognize is segregation so most people would feel like okay well i rep east side i rep website me as myself i do i live on the east side but also knowing that i know my community because i travel by bus everywhere i like i you know i've been in my community a lot i know if you know buffalo you should know that east side is mainly around african-american people and like arabs uh the west side is more so of the immigrants and Puerto Ricans and Latinos and Latinas and the North Buffalo is more so of predominantly rich white folk. More this is more it's starting to get a little bit more diverse, but it's not as it's not as fast as it should be or as it should have already been diverse. And the South Side, which is is actually predominantly poor white people who also are having a lot of more black people come into their thing, once again, it should we shouldn't already we shouldn't be having these issues with segregation regardless as a city of the city of good neighbors in this current as a kid yeah. in a current state we are so i feel like that's one problem with race and then also with schools a lot of the inner city schools are just straight black kids like you don't really see that and going to the outer out of sight uh, uh outer city schools so like on the edge like where hillary is down in Millersburg road is what school i went to and i'm also up at da vinci which is also on the edge of like our uh, line and stuff like that, you kind of see more of a diverse people, but you also see mostly 
whatever area you're in is the majority. Okay, so whatever area you're in is the majority of people you're gonna see in that school. Which I understand because you don't want to really leave your community because it's your community. But at the same time, it shouldn't be that because we shouldn't be segregated in the first place. So. And to piggyback off of what Giselle said, like Buffalo as a whole is segregated in like six, six different ways. Um, shout out to this job. Well, it's, it, it's segregated from like the blacks, the white, um, the Hispanic, Asians, uh, Muslims, and all different parts. Um, and also, it's like representation of those groups is like poor out here. Um, like the school systems, school systems are not really that diverse. Um, which there should be more of so people can get more uh, perspective on other things. Um, I was going to say something else. What was it? Um, I don't know, but picking back off what you said about the education and stuff yeah. like that, um, having problems, also having problems with race, uh, talking to Got our it. teachers, talking to our yeah. teachers and stuff like that. Uh, as a high school student, I shouldn't be going to high school talking to my teacher about where I live and that teacher's not knowing, that teacher growing up in Buffalo, living in Buffalo, having no clue that any of this stuff happened. Like, so, like how she was talking about earlier, how the people, like teachers that coming in uh, from outside of Buffalo talks about like the highlights of Buffalo, but don't go into detail how it really is and what is really going on with them. Well, not with them, but you know, Buffalo itself. But I did remember what I was talking about, um, like, like how people like, how we were called the city of good neighbors, but we only get together, like how we like talked about a couple months ago, like if it's like over the bills, then that's when people come together. But other than that, like that's like the only time people really come together, which is like bad, because like they're hypocrites, not to be rude, but y'all some hypocrites out here that talks about that we are the city of good neighbors. We want to um, include ourselves, be inclusive, and not be um, exclusive to anybody, whether race, ethnicity, religion, or anything. But y'all are literally doing the exact opposite. Y'all are being segregating. Um, people who are in the political um, hierarchy are not represent representing people um, well. They're not representing youth well or black youth well because, like, we had our. Um, our thing yesterday, symposium. yeah, our symposium yesterday, um, when we're seen as like right now, like when we are doing this, they're not taking us seriously, and they think that we're being rebellious. But no, we have a voice to say. We're trying to tell you. What solutions do you have for those issues that you stated? Listen, like for real, like, like, st like, be more open-minded. And I know that's real, like a lot of this stuff that we're about to say is easier said than done, and. It's going to take you to get out of your comfort zone and stop being conservatory and like really focus, sit down, watch, listen to what they're saying and just don't do this by yourself because then you, you're most likely going to be influenced when it, my bad, it most likely will be influenced by other people having like different rebuttals or having the same, you know, ideas rather than you just sitting there by yourself, not having any feedback from other people and not listening to what other people are saying. So for this question, I feel like there's it's for solutions. I feel like there's two major things that we need to do for solutions. is communication and fixing misunderstanding. So I'm going to break this into two parts. As adults, as adults now in age, I feel like you guys, you guys are saying that we are your future. That you guys are saying we are this, we are that, we're going to shape this future of this country. But if you're not going to let us shape our own future of this country, you, there, you, have to, you have to meet us halfway. We can't, you can't expect us to meet you at a certain point and just have this mindset that we are already an adults, we should be grown, we should be grown up where you're not meeting us at a point where at certain a certain time in your life you were my age and you were in my setting that you have to also understand where we're coming from. So you can't say you want to create a path for new generations when you're the main thing blocking that path. You have to make sure you like Kendrick said you have to be open minded. Even though it's hard you have it's hard to be open minded because you're just you're in a mindset like, oh, you're a kid, what do you know? So how should I say this? When you were a kid, what did you know? Type of like, stuff like that. At the same time, it's also like you have to learn when you're wrong. Like it's okay, it's okay as an adult to be wrong. It's also okay as youth to respect that the adult was wrong. Don't just shove it in their face that they was wrong because that means now you're creating conflict. Now you're, you're not getting anywhere. So as adults, you have to make sure you're like, okay, you understand you were wrong. 
how can I help you so we both can be in the right? So we both can make that connection and make that uni be united. So we, when generations come after you, we, we, both of us, we, you can, we can teach what we taught you and what you have learned from our misunderstanding that doesn't happen again for the great generations that come by. And for our youth, what I want you to do is I want you to actually sit down and listen to the adult. I know it might be hard as I'm telling the adults to listen to you, but as youth, you have to understand that they are also at a certain point where generations before them told them certain things that they're trying to teach you. And you're trying to tell them that the generation that taught them what they know is not going to work for our generation. And for that to happen, you also have to listen and you also have to acknowledge when you were wrong. You have to make sure that you know that you're wrong. So at certain parts, you're wrong and certain parts, you're right. Because each generation only knows what's right and what's wrong for their generation. We don't know what happened in the generation before us and we sure don't know what's going to happen after us. So we have to make sure that if we're going to create this path where we want people of minority, I'm not going to say minority, just people that look like you to be in a, state, in a state where they have this privilege, where they have this power, where you don't have to worry about going on a street and whether you're going to be put over, shot up, beat up, jump, rob. You have to make sure, you have to listen, you have to connect for both adults and for you. So when generations come behind us, we can cave that way where they don't have to walk outside and feel unsafe. They don't have to worry about how am I gonna get to school next? How am I gonna get to school today? How am I supposed to eat today? How am I, what am I gonna eat tomorrow? We have to sit down and make that connection. Because if we don't, and we keep fighting against each other, it's gonna be an all out war for the rest of our lives. Yeah, we're not gonna get nowhere. What does it mean to be an ally? In what way? I'm saying, like an ally, <laughs> you know. Okay, so to be an ally, I feel like that goes with uh, cultural appropriation. That I feel like that kind of ties into a certain thing where it's like, you can say being an ally, be like, okay, I'm gonna post, like, I'm gonna do an example, example like LGBTQ as a bisexual woman myself. So you can be an ally. June hits is when all the stores want to magically start throwing up rainbows, and then as soon as June is over, you're gone. Like the same thing. It's like same thing that happens Valentine's Day. It's February, month of February. People celebrate Valentine's Day. It's like Kiffy Month. You have all this stuff out. As soon as the month is over, beyond as soon as 12 o'clock hits, the month is over. Everything just changes. So I feel like being an ally is not going to say I'm going to help you guys this day or for as long as you guys are going to stay passionate for or as long as you guys, as long as it's hot. Being an ally is not staying as long as it's hot. Like being an ally is being, whether you come in late, whether you're there from the beginning or you come in the middle and the sure whether you come at the end is letting sure that you, no matter what, you stay till the end. And not even towards the end, you stay beyond the end. Because staying beyond it, it mean, truly means that you set that passion and you set yourself on the fact that you're going, you're set on this change. You're going to work through this change. You're going to keep this change going no matter whoever says the end just the end is only just a new beginning and to also piggyback what off of Giselle said like being an ally is somebody who is there through thick and thin who would like would do their all and give their all to it um I was about to say something what was it um I'm not you. I don't know what you're thinking. I know, I know. <laughs> um, yeah, but you know, just being there through um, everything, um, you know, showing up, showing out, and you know, taking action, not just like, not just like being there, but not, not just like being there, um, just because it's like a thing to do now in the moment. You should be, you know, there, sitting, like working through it, planning. Uh, through the developing stages like we're doing right like right now you know we're um we're trying our best to put our best foot forward being an ally to whatever organization or to whatever um what is it uh how would you call this like program. yeah like a program or like a junction or like an event like you know just being there in any shape way form um and it might be hard to be a, a ally for whatever, but if you can just do like the little things that that could make a huge difference for whatever, and you probably don't even know it. But you know, just like you're a hundred percent all in there. And like um, how our friend said earlier in one of our speeches, um, um, like if you're not truly like if you're not getting mad or you're not like rageful about 
what's going on and you're saying that you're an ally and you're saying that you're with this then are you truly like about what you're saying are you truly about what what's going on if not you need to step back and get out the way so the people who are for the people who are trying to do it they can come in and do their job while you step back and you know be yourself in that corner and then if you, you are trying to be step back and you, you look and you observe and then when you're ready then you can come back you know I think that's how you answer it that. Would you say that the allies with that power and privilege have a responsibility to help solve issues to their ally communities? Absolutely because why are you there? I feel like if you're an ally with power and privilege then at that point I feel like you set and I don't feel like you set yourself up I feel like you started to how should I say this? If you're an ally with privilege, with power and privilege, you must be, that means you have to, you're, that means you're willing to share your power and privilege with this group of people who are trying to make a change. And if you're gonna sit there and have this power and privilege and just be gonna be like, you know, be like the, like you're like a sign that says, oh, you know, just to let you guys know, I have this power and privilege. It means you have somebody big backing you. You're not backing me. It just means your your power and privilege it's is not. It's like going through what we've been through for the past like two days. Actually, like acting it out, taking actions, um, planning our actions. What we did today, and like just going through it. Like it's like it's not only hard on us when we got to do like our everyday lives and stuff and then coming to do this putting our best foot forward we want the people who are saying that they're allies and saying who are like the people who are saying that they're here to do what they got to do we really need y'all to actually be on your end game put your money where your mouth is put your power and privilege where your mouth is and actually you know step up come in and help us um and just for um, the youth and the adults, when we were talking about earlier, like um, keep in mind that the adults that were here, they do know what they're talking about. So not everybody's always right. The youth is not always right, and the adults is not always right. So it's one thing to be wrong, but it's another thing to know you're wrong, and then, like Giselle says, shove it in the other person's face, and then that's when we get conflict or whatever. So just be mindful, be open-minded, and be true to each and every one of each other. Like respect everybody, every little respect everybody, and just know what's going on.